that's it. That's that's how I feel comfortable as a graph writer. That's why I'm. That's why I would want to be at. Yo, bro, I just want to do me. You know what I mean? This is what I've been doing my whole life. I live this when I do it. I don't. I'm not emulating. You know what a graph writer would do. I am what a graph writer it does. I am. That's what I am. God, I love you. Said that. Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. You need the Television app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Box created. Killer Keller. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Go ahead, man. Rock out, man. I'm with you. Yes, people. You know what time it is? Killer Keller Podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Reporting to you live from here. But we're going across transatlantic right about now. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. And of course, anyone's checked out the television app. Yeah, that's right. We're doing it. Um, going over to Philadelphia. Now, when I talk about a gentleman, that it just would not be correct in not having him as part of the tapestry in the ever-building tapestry of the Killer Keller podcast. Man, I've been waiting for this one. And them, TDK, inside the place, Philadelphia's finest. How are you, my brother? Yo, what an intro. Thank you, brother. Them kind words, man. I, I'm, just, I'm chilling, man. I'm happy. I'm alive. I'm doing what I love doing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's all good over here. Tell you, man, we've been fighting this technology right now. But I tell you what, it's given us a real open opportunity to, to you know, rapport with graffiti writers. Um, Yo. Few and far between. We managed to crack this early doors, man. You are one hell of an open book. You're so charismatic. You can't be using words like charismatic unless you're coming over tonight, man. <laughs> You got to chill out with all that smooth talk. Listen, Am I finessing? Am I- <laughs> you, you, you are running a finesse on your boy. Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it, though, because I always feel like, you know, the arts in general are super connected. You know what I mean? Like, I got the same kind of passion for music as I do for art. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm not a musician, but I love music. You know, I love rap. I love I love producing music. I love the blues, jazz, like rock, it's art, you know what I mean? I feel you completely. It's all one and the same. And and with Bismarck he recently passing away. Uh, and, and okay, so now you're talking about impact, right? Yeah. We're talking about what a man or what a woman, what a person can do to impact the world, you know. And when we say impact the world, you know, we're not talking about build a pyramid. We're talking about consciously connecting with the masses mm. and, and leaving them with something that that is 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 it's palpable to a, a pyramid, right? Mm-hmm. Just that information, that power, that connectivity. In, at my age, now I'm, I'm about to be 50, but at my age, if you wasn't listening to the biz, if you wasn't listening to biz marketing, you probably wasn't having fun. You probably wasn't, you wasn't a part of what, what we was, so many of us were a part of. You probably weren't dancing and, and, and laughing and meeting girls like we were. Yeah. Because he was a soundtrack to that part of my life when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. His impact was everything. Like, we tried to emulate those rappers, the way they dressed, you know what I'm saying? The slang they used. Mm. Um, we used those lines on chicks. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, 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 oh, you say he's just a friend, huh? You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, that, that dude is, that dude was, mm, it, it hurts, man. That, that kind of stuff hurts, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, you. and and you're gonna hear about the DMXs and all them, how great they were. But a Bismarcky, that's a kind soul, ain't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, a kind yeah, soul. Yeah. Like the way it comes across, that energy is kind and powerful, man. Connected, mm. like just transcended the generation. They they tell you anything else, they lie to you. Yeah, that's. There's an innocence. There was an innocence to him as a character personifying hip hop at its yeah. at its most playful organic um and fell within the it was it was the perfect balance of the time of of of, uh creative disciplines within hip-hop right youthful innocence man and and partying and you know just feel good music there there were a lot of artists back then that had just feel good music you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying 
you know, not not to to harp on it, but <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. You know, Will Smith is like the king of feel good music. This man came out yeah. with his song called Summer Summertime. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, listen. Yeah. I'm not going to sing for y'all. Rest in peace, Bismarcky. That dude was powerful, man. Yeah. Like, I, I think people should just take time to look back on his catalog, listen to it, look yeah. back on his videos and see the smiles he brought to people. How, how you know, how yeah. much it impacted the next person without ever having to meet him in for person. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's a powerful thing. I think you're right. And I also feel like now, seems in, particularly in this world of communication, um, aside from graffiti in the world of communication like celebrating the peers and the elders and giving people their flowers is, is it feels like not only yeah. it feels like the right thing to do don't it it's like because we're all talking about this stuff and and things can be so throwaway like graffiti by default is like a, a, a very um compulsive obsessive thing that comes and goes it's very transient but 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 conversations like this they, they last forever and it's so important to uh give people their flowers right well, I feel you. I feel you on everything you said except for that Graham thing. Graham is ever evolving for each and every generation that can accept it. It's a youthful rebel, and it's beautiful when the youth get involved because their creative imagination is powerful enough to break the norms of what you might think is normal. There are many examples of them. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to name them all because this ain't shout out America. This is this is this is just a statement about what I what I've experienced in my uh, almost forty years of writing graffiti. You know, this thing is ever evolving, ever evolving. I think Scene said it best when he said that graffiti is for kids. The only problem is you don't get good till you're an adult. But the beginnings of that, the makings of that, the clay of that—that's where all the new styles come from. Those young kids and the competition that they feel amongst each other. That, that builds them, that molds them. You know, the, the testing of ideas, the forcing of ideas. Man, you know, mm-hmm. graph is beautiful because we build a new ceiling every time and somebody else crashes it. And I, and I love that. That, that part of, the, of, of my culture is, is unstoppable. I agree. Um, the, the aspect Thank I was coming Yeah, man, the aspect I was coming from when I mentioned a f- throwaway is because not from a from graph as an organism right but, but as a but as a um as a tool in being able to do the simple well, I say simplest it's not the simplest when a, a a quote unquote throwaway I'm going to do a tag here and I know it's going to get the buff but I'm blasting on it boom 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 and oh. I'm walking around, do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, the selfless deliverance of free art to the world. Yes. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. Yo, <laughs> I spent a whole lifetime in giving people shit that I know I was never going to get back. Yeah. You, you, as a graffiti writer, a real graffiti writer, one that goes out and, and, and takes his shot at the world. The the, the thing that, that blows me away is that people don't see how brave they have to be to do it when it comes yeah. to the art. Like, they got to put it out there, and they know that the world's going to criticize them. They already know they got built-in, like, haters. The police going to hate them. You know, people that, 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 that uh, the other writers going to hate them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be difficult you. for them to to build some type of, like, fan base or build people that believe in their art. But, yeah, they, they constantly push to do it yeah. until they're good enough to really display. And then after a while, people want to take advantage of that art form that they built up. It's, it's wild. I've seen it a few times. And, um, you know, some can really hang and some can't. But I, I just think it's it's an amazing thing to experience. It's an amazing thing to experience, man. Graphics. Bar none, the other street sport a lot. I, 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 think, I think that mirrors a lot about of what, what a lot of guests do say on the podcast. There should be like some... You know, if you're an artist, full stop, you, similar to boot camp, you should go and experience graph before you even get into any sort of art. Like, there's just so many. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It has to happen. You know, it's rules. You know, you can't. It's the rawest <laughs> form. Nobody do that hell, man. <laughs> 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 nobody do that hell. <laughs> the one thing I will say <laughs> is that most graffiti writers volunteer for this one. See, there's no litmus test. There's no, like, application to fill out. You just decide one day, this is what I'm trying to do. Mm. Now, whether you survive 
man, that's that's a test of wills. Yeah. Some people, like I said, you're gonna get support, but then you're gonna get a, a negative backlash if you're not like seasoned, if you're not like um aware, if you, if you just think you can just come out and write on everything, you know what I'm saying? Go over other graffiti writers and disrespect spots and the whole politics of it, right? Yeah. That's gonna short live your career unless you got tough skin. Yeah. And if you can get through that. And the criticism of that your style isn't good and your toy, and you don't know what you're doing. And you can keep pushing and doing your own thing. And you can learn. Teach yourself, if not seek out the information from somebody who will teach you. But teach yourself all the little things that you want to know. It'll lead to a curiosity to the rest of it. Mm. And eventually you'll understand how you want to do your name in every fashion that you can, as far as tagging, throw-ups, straight letters, pieces, wild styles. You even explore characters and backgrounds. You might even go into different forms of art afterwards. Like now I want to try oil painting. That might be something you want to do. But that I hear you with that boot camp. If you would say put people through that, <laughs> dude, a lot of artists wouldn't want to be artists no more. I'm telling you, bro. I'm They'd be like, ah, oh, man, that's shit too much. That's some bullshit. But, but for us, you. it was a labor of love. There's, it's almost like you need to develop the same kind of knowledge as a taxi cab driver around a city knowing where everything is and what you know what what you do's and don'ts and then the flip side of it is it's an exercise in tolerance you know it's like how much can you withstand the pressure of seasonal hate <laughs> you got you got dudes this 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 out here and they they hold true to their name and and if you go over their name and what you put they're ready to fight you but then even them see I've, I've been in the game long enough to see even they even they have to stop after a while and be like how long can i put keep up that yeah. How long can I keep going back and regulate my shit? Some niggas say I'll do it forever, but they get tired, man. They get weary of that game. You know what I mean? It's not inspirational anymore. It's, yeah. it's a fire when you feel like somebody offends you at first. But if you just jump in it every time anybody offends you, it starts to not have the same effect. You don't start to have the same fire. It, it, it Graffiti is one of these things that it grows with you as a person. It takes on... Um, not really alter ego, but like a complimentary ego to who you are. <laughs> so if you're into like hardcore shit, you're going to like hardcore grab. If you're into like smooth shit, you're going to like smooth grab. If you're into like very neat, perfect, you know, precise stuff, you're going to find artists that are into like perfect, detailed, dope work. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's it, graffiti is for everybody. It's, yeah, it's, no. it's so hard to put something right. like this in a ball, right? Mm. You know, because if they could, they would have already canned it up and sold it like gumbo. It's hard to like put all this together. But if you think about it, it's it's in its simplest form, it's like freedom of creativity and expression mm. for anybody. Yeah. Anybody can do this, man. You know what I mean? Why do you the think only it thing is that stops these castes themselves, huh? Well, that's what I was just gonna say. It's only you're right, bro. Like it's only them. It's only the people. I don't know. There's a real kind of protectiveness, a pos possessiveness to some writers that, like, they don't. I mean, I listen. I think each city and each, you know, territory is all very different. And and we'll definitely get into the Philly thing in a minute because my mind blows. Because yeah, I can, I can only imagine what the politics in the UK really come down to. I only know a couple cats out there. You know what I mean? But I can only imagine what is there. And every place I've ever visited in the States, and I really haven't traveled overseas, everybody has their own scene and environment, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody has their own politics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm looking at the equalizers, the things that we all share, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the obstacles we all face instead of like what it is for this guy because he's a train writer or what it is for these dudes because they're about rooftops. And what yeah. it is about this dude because he only hits high speed lines. Like I don't, I don't care about your politics. I'm talking about the application of this game. Mm. <laughs> Super I, important. I, if that makes sense, I don't. <laughs> no, nope, it makes it makes. I just smoked some good ass weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense, boy, the weed work. You keep smoking that weed, we're gonna have ourselves a banging podcast. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, bro, what makes complete sense is it comes from the voice of you now for those of you who don't know about the nm uh philadelphia's finest like at least 25 30 years in the game deep um one of the original 37 started from, years i've been right for 37 years 37 years 
37 years, yeah. And 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 I used to be kind of ashamed of saying stuff like that because there's so many writers out there that have been writing 40 years, mm. 40, 50 years. These old heads is beast, you know what I'm saying? You know, you could you could look through New York and find guys that are, you know, pushing 60, 60, you know, they yeah. they up there. That's a pioneer tenure. For me, I'm I feel like a kid who grew up in the mix. You know, I was lucky. I put it that way. The 80s was lucky for me. You know, um, 90s is is where I really felt like I became more than my neighborhood type of writer. Like, I didn't even think about, like, in the 90s, I didn't think about anything but painting and anywhere I could. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Later on, it matures with me, but. Yeah, I'm at the 37 years. I mean to, to cut you off like that, but I got to say that right, man, because I'm not no young boy. A lot of dudes be thinking because I'm still painting and they still see me painting that I'm some young dude. Like, when I shave, you don't see the gray hairs. Yeah, nothing, right? <laughs> Jeans are real out uh, here. No, that is a... It's worth celebrating without question. Um, celebrate that. Um, no, it's definitely. Every day given. Mm. I feel like when I think of the Philadelphia scene, I feel like the best way to define it, and you are one of the main proprietors of this, and you know, I, I held you in part accountable. Uh, the serious play, like there's no, there's, there's, there's a level of grit. It's work. It's, it's a work, there's a work ethic to your graph. And, and I also feel like they're for, for a scene, exceptionally healthy, like, tags to when i think of philly i think of like stamps and wickets i feel like i think yeah. and this is this from a uk point of view I, yeah. i'm i'd argue not a lot of people even know you know what wickets are you know what i'm saying oh it's the and, and it's amazing to us because the cat's been out the bag for like decades now for us like everybody in the states knows you know what philadelphia's contribution to like tagging and crazy. what our what contribution to the hand style game it's crazy but in philadelphia like they a lot of people fail to realize that, you know, before it became, uh, before there was an internet or before any of this stuff was like mainstream or even like hand styles themselves were even mainstream. Um, you know, tagging was always been robust and traditional in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we coming from, I'm coming from a city where like, you know, Hey, I got nephews, you know, and my nephews, they grown, they run around, they cats, you know, my kids, they, they older, they run around, they, yeah, and then my papa and then my uncle, just like, when I came up, you know, my man Sank said, oh, yeah, schoolboy, my uncle. You know what I mean? Like, people wow. in, our, in, in, our, in our city generationally passed down graph to each other as mm -hmm. well. So you got, you got, like, a sense that um, the cat's out the bag. Yeah, everybody been known. But we still a man on the island. We're still going to keep bombing these streets. These guys still out here bombing and tagging. Mm -hmm. You know, they're testing new kids. You, there's new names on the wall now. Everybody's debating whether or not they're good or not, whether or not they got the flow. Mm. Some people are like, that's my crew. You know, they repping. You know, it's it's a robust field of, like, graffiti here, real graffiti, not, like, you know, for the camera tagging. You know, I, I, know, that, I know that that's a popular thing, the flare tag, camera. I've done it. I think it's mm. funny, but... When I tag on a on a wall, the tag I do on the wall nine times out of ten is something I would do in the street in the dark that I would do on the creep that I would really do. The tags that we see on 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 a, on a lot of these these uh these videos are things that are like you know premeditated, they're in a, a closed off area where you can really do something, you know, really mm. neat and pretty and cute and all that. That's not the kind of situation we got here. We got niggas walking through your neighborhood, tearing up everything, you know, hitting the blocks, the up highs, down lows, creeping the back streets, mm. doors, air conditions, buses, vans, poles, like, ain't no picture. Mm. Anything they feel like bombing and they coming through, they, they tapping. They going, they going, and, and it's, it's a unspoken competition. It's always going on. And it's always been like that in Philadelphia. So, <clears throat> when it comes to tagging, I, I I don't I'm not saying we're the best. I'm just saying we we got a real tagging scene. It's not three guys trying to show off. 
No, there's a lot. You know, it's, yeah, it's 30, 30, 40 guys actively running around the city. Yo, that's crazy. And females. You know, we've had some of the best female taggers in the world. You know, shout out to my friend Karma. She, Hold yo, tight, Karma. <laughs> yes, yeah, we went to New York and crushed the earth. Can I just Ooh. say, Karma, Karma for me is like, She's like a silent. She's like silent assassin, man. She goes in like just, she, she, yo, she just built for the game. You know yeah. what I mean? And she, she, you know, she, she applies what 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 she does any and everywhere indiscriminately. She doesn't pick and choose. Like, well, I'm not in Philly, so I'm gonna do a different type of hairstyle. Mm. For years now, she just goes up in New York and shakes the buildings up. Like, boom, wait the fuck up, and then mm. all types of New Yorkers fall out the tree. Everybody want to come out bombing. I'm like, ooh, good move. Because, yeah. you know, I see, I can see where the earthquake happened. I know when 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 she come through, we're well, easy, right? Mm-hmm. And they blow up Canal Street. All of a sudden, Canal Street blowing up. Come yeah. on, man. Let's follow a leader, man. Ain't nobody slow. I'm just saying she has the wherewithal to really, like, apply her graph from Philly anywhere she goes. So if you was to drop her anywhere else, she would probably do the exact same thing to him. Mm-hmm. She would probably take him out. You know what I mean? I like that silent assassin. I bet she like <laughs> she'd probably be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, dude, like, yeah, I mean, and also the the individuality of the tags, like there's no there is the there is the um quote unquote Philly style, clearly. But when you think of like someone like like North Philly, I mean, Cat is Cat from North Philly. Cat, yeah, Kat, North Philly. Cat, K I W, Cat from Uptown. Yeah, 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 yeah. I right. Like that. I like the way you pick that name out. Well, Kat. Be, because for me, because for me, like his style is like, I mean, it's it's totally different to to Karma. You know what I mean? Like, oh, definitely. And yet they the same crew because yeah. that's the thing about Philly writers. Is even if you had, you know, I don't care how many people in your crew, the majority, everybody's going to have a different hairstyle. Yeah. But it's all going to be in the same vein mm. as Phil. Now, Cat, Cat's an OG. Yeah, he's Kat, an OG. Yeah, no, he a different, that's that nigga cut from a different cloth. Look, when I tell you he took this city out, he's taken it out multiple times. But when Cat come through the city, look, I, I told this man, I said, listen, you done made the city your motherfucking kitty litter the way you didn't shit on all these goddamn streets. <laughs> Yo, this man destroyed everything. I mean, and and he, he don't play that shit either, like that old, I just bust a slam. It'd be cat, 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 all the way down the fucking wall. Then it'll jump across the street to the cat, 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 cat. I said, God damn. You know? Yeah. He'll hit all the all the good spots too. He's he's one of them dudes that's in tune with the strip. Like he get out there and, and you know he's smooth. He he a thorough dude. I'm not gonna speak on him more like you know too much, but th- that name I like that name. I respect that name. So when you brought it up, it made made me think of good things. Yeah, yeah cat is a is a legend. I like that cat man. And and and, the, and the, he applies the Philly mentality of bomb hard, hard as yeah. shit. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like like I don't feel like you you as like when you were saying earlier about your international. The international uh, presence of NM, um, that that I think that spawns from your verse. Obviously, awesome, good peoples, fucking good peoples, first and foremost. But listen, I, I definitely, I'm gonna tell you something. In, in, in grab, I've met more incredible people that probably weren't the person that somebody was like, he's the dopest. You know yeah. what I mean? But they were like absolutely amazing people, and I wouldn't have met them if it wasn't for graffiti. For sure. Right? And then I've met people that are absolutely amazing. And I'm thinking, ah, let me be careful. This guy probably got six, seven chips on his shoulder. And he mm-hmm. winds up being the sweetest dude in the world, like Tizzard, right? No, Big, yo, dude, yo. Giant, right? <laughs> like, you're like, this dude is this shit. Like, I met that dude literally in like five minutes. That bull's energy, like, wrapped me up. And the next thing I know, I was hugging this cat. And it oh, wasn't Tizer. No As in Tizer? Tizer ID? Tizer, yeah. Yeah, Tizer. oh my God. Hold tight, <laughs> Tizer. Look, look, wrap me up, man. And yo, we shared his lunch with me. The guy, the, look, the, a gentle giant, but an awesome human being. You know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. smile is infectious. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's funny because you meet a lot of people, but 
I will never forget the time I met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel it's you. Just because his energy was just on point. Like, it's just, yeah, yo, this dude is what's up, man. He made me smile inside. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know. <laughs> but when you get the combination of the two, like, like yourself, very similar trait in that respect, but you've got skill set that's so versatile, same as Tizer, the skill set combined with the personality, that's what that's what creates the zeitgeist. I, I love that, man. I, I'm not sure if people confuse um, my skill set with my ability to have fun. <laughs> because <laughs> half the shit you, I do is I'm having fun. I'm just playing around and trying to figure out something. I don't... I, I learned a long time ago that I couldn't take it too serious unless it was going to be like my full-time job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm not a trained artist, right? I, I'm self-taught. I taught myself how to work with colors. I taught myself how to draw. I failed art class in high school. I got kicked out. I was a bad kid. So I didn't get to, I didn't get to say, you know, hey, I went to this institute or I, I went to this school or none of that. I, it was all learned in the streets. Mm-hmm. So I, I need the fun. Yeah. They don't need, I need it. They don't need that. For me, I got to enjoy myself. Now, that doesn't mean, yo, let's go to the wall and get drunk. That means let me paint and play with these colors and figure out some things I've never done before and attempt mm-hmm. to do some stuff that I haven't done before and and and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Or if I just feel like doing a certain thing, I just feel like doing this today and just do that. That's, that's what it's for me, man. It's so therapeutic for me, man. Graph mm-hmm. is so therapeutic for me, man. You know, I could be anywhere in the world. It could be anything going on. And once I start painting, I'm the only person alive. If time flies, I, I, I assume. Yeah, and you don't care. I don't care when times when I'm painting. I don't care the times flying. Mm-hmm. Only unless unless I'm banging some shit and everybody taking too long. And I'm like, yo, y'all taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The, it's always there for you. Um, for, in fact, while I'm at it, reference points, infamy documentary, which you, you, you featured on heavily. I mean, when you talk about upbringings, I thought it was awesome that your mum was in the dock. I mean, it harks back to a, a, a late 90s me chewing up as much graffiti documentaries from the US as I could. But I, I jumped back into it recently and I was just like, oh, man, you know, this is this is the shit. Like it, it, it's nostalgia and it's nostalgia and a watch, I swear. That's a great doc. Though. Everybody involved in that doc, I think, is it has, has a huge impact and grab. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, it was a project that Roger Gassman put together. So, you know, that guy is, you know, he's legendary. And it, and it definitely, you know, gave me a chance to talk to the graph world. Like it, it, it wound up being that that big that I got a chance to speak to like the rest of the graph community and in, in the world that was willing to check it out. And that was a good thing for me. You know what I mean? And also big up Z Trip for the soundtrack. DJ Z Trip. Yeah. <gasps> Killed it. <laughs> Some wild shit was going on with that thing, man. I'm telling you, boy. <laughs> I got a song on the soundtrack. You what? Peace down. Yeah. Well, you produced I, it or you rapped it? Yeah, I used to rap. I got a I got a song on that soundtrack with a um a group um I was in called B and G Brown and Grands, me and my homie. Stop and DJ it. Sat Orton produced it. And uh yeah, they 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 shot it in on Paladin Entertainment when they put the uh soundtrack together. I was like, ooh, your boy is star. This is news. <laughs> Hold on, it's okay. called Graph Superstar. Check that shit out, man. Yeah, that's gonna it's be also, the theme tune, boy. It's gonna be the hold theme up. tune. It's, it's so old, man. Look, it's called <laughs> Graph Superstar, and also I think it's on um uh, a mixtape that DJ Sat One put out called After Midnight. Ooh, that name alone sounds sick. Yeah, yeah. DJ Sat One is 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 a, is a beast, man. He 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 tour, used to tour with Jazzy Jeff all the time. Him and Jeff used to do a lot of work. They still do. They're friends, you know, and they they they've been working together for decades now, right? You know what? So I, the more you see, and again, like we're just busting and chatting, then I suddenly remember the lineage. You're Philadelphian, man. Cornbread, <laughs> fucking cornbread. You guys were graph oh, before. Hey. Yeah, oh, hey. you guys were graph before it was popularized. I'm look. I, I get into arguments about it all the time. People want to tell me about like P 
pyramids and stuff. And somebody carved, George Washington carved something into my ass. I, I don't know. Listen, I don't care about who wrote on what first. I don't care about Kilroy or the gangs or whoever wrote. I'm telling you, the ideology of graffiti that I know mm-hmm. was started in Philadelphia. The ideology of taking your name from neighborhood to neighborhood and bomb representing your crew. All of those things started in Philadelphia. For me. Mm-hmm. What I know, they're the oldest, you know, reference points that I have. So the whole crew thing comes from the Philadelphia, you know, uh, social clubs thing, right? Mm. So ICP was the Imperial Casanova Persuaders. Mm. They had a social club. You know, they brought their girls down there. They had a treasurer. They had somebody who took notes. It was a club. You know what I'm saying? But ICP is also the oldest and longest running graffiti group in Philadelphia, right? <laughs> so this thing has been around since the 60s. All I'm saying is everything that I know comes from Philadelphia. I didn't get it from New York in that sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What I did get from New York was the ideas of peace, right? When I got from, from California, it was peace. I, I, I loved the way the peace was. And our pieces back then, they it wasn't that they weren't doing it. They were just behind. Mm. They were behind a little bit. Our, our peace and culture wasn't growing as fast as our tagging culture. But the rest of the world's peace and culture was flying. Right? Everybody was... So that was something that I wanted to get involved in. I already felt as though I could write that I was going to tag, you know what I mean? That I was going to get my name up and it, you know, it didn't matter where I went. Mm. I was going to bomb, but I wanted to peace. So long story short, you know, I started trying to peace with some, you know, behind some of the old heads in Philadelphia. They didn't approve. I was whack, of course. You know, I kept pushing. I went other places when I was in California. I met a uh, an incredible human being, Dream TDK. You know, he he supported me. My man Zero supported me. My man Stair supported me. A lot of people, you know, didn't think that my idea of peace and was ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I would come back to Philadelphia in the 80s, 90s and, and, and go back into it again and keep pushing and keep pushing. And then there is a, a group of pieces in Philadelphia that I can relate to. And we all keep start pushing and pushing our scene. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like I feel like being in Philadelphia, man, and living in Philadelphia is a great experience uh, for, yeah. for the beauty writer. Um, but my job now is to kind of let them know that, you know, it's a whole world out here, bro. You know what I mean? You got to go where I ain't go. You got to do what I ain't did. Because that's the only way you're going to find the next level. You know yeah. what I mean? It's to just look beyond everybody else that, that done it. And, and do what they ain't done. Easy stuff. You know what I mean? And experience bigger and better things. And bring it back home and try to influence your scene and, and get kids to really, like, to really get engaged. Because mm. graph, graph is a good thing, man. Art is a beautiful thing, man. Save your life. Trust me. Save your life. Um, you, you said something earlier about what something the scene said. Um, uh, regarding um, the older you get, the older oh, you get. The graph is, is for kids. The only problem is you don't get good till you're an adult. Yeah. And then life things happen, life things throw at you as you get older as well. And, you know, shit happens. You know, we all we'll have different life um, uh, things, entrapments, responsibilities, and, you know, and other more important issues with family and whatnot, health, your yeah. own health. Um, but the other thing that you, 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 you said, which, um, I, I must confess, I, I have, for this reason, have um, gone into a bit of, I've never painted before a graph, but I wanted to stop drinking and it was a real hard challenge. How did I stop drinking? I focused on something else and it's become the, the, the best thing that, that arguably could ever happen to me. I'm, I'm doing this thing and I'm sure you're the same, man. Like when you have a bereavement, oh, yeah. when something's sad, when something gets you down, you man, having trouble. I don't paint it when people pass. I done painted, arguing with my lady. <laughs> I, my mom kicked me out. I was out painting somewhere. I just got out of jail, went to go paint somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, then, but then it was also a thing of joy, you know what I mean? My kid was born, you know, after the couple of days I'm out here painting because I'm joy. I want to do something for my baby, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, yo, got a new job that first weekend. Woo, feeling good, you know what I mean? I'm going to go paint, like. Painting is an excuse for me to just step off and reset, man. 
focus on something else and reset everything inside, man. Mm. Boom. Mm. You know what I mean? It's an escape. It's better than it's better than drugs. It's better than being murderous or crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what other people do. They when they they want to escape, they stick a needle in their arm. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? When I want to escape, right. I grab a can of Montana '94, some hardcore, and I go creep something. Like, yay! People, people, again, you know, it, 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 the the misunderstood uh, world of of graph. It, 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 it's so important to remind ourselves that this this thing has saved lives. This thing has this thing has enabled a, a voice for people that were the voiceless. Believe it. I hope that it'll it'll really look. I know that like graph could help a lot of people who don't have. I have a, a lot of times in my life where I haven't had graph has helped me get through shit. Mm. But I see people in like other countries. I have you know I'm not gonna put their names up there, but other people I know that I ain't living that good. Mm. But graph seems like a way for them to get out, and they've been making it happen slowly but surely. Yeah. You know, just doing little ventures, making T-shirts, and doing like stickers or whatever they need to do. Mm. Over here in the states, cats are t- man, that shit ain't nothing but twenty dollars, thirty dollars. Yo, that shit go a long way for that cat over there. Hundred percent. That shit changing his life right now. Because you know what it is. It's not a, when 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 you're given money for your thing. What that that doesn't the money doesn't signify success. What what it signifies is professionalism. It means that you're getting paid because of your professional expertise in something. It means that you can go to the next level. It doesn't matter if you get the money. I mean, it'd be nice to get the same money again, especially if you're broke. But right. it, it shows a level of professionalism that gives, makes you realize, ah, that person believes in me enough that they're willing to pay for it. Oh, especially. yeah. See, I, I, I learned that money is a situation. I used to think it was a reward. It was a reward for whatever I did. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, yeah. I didn't understand that it, it, it wasn't. No. That it was it was just earned, yeah. And just earned is something totally different to me. Mm-hmm. So you know, other places people see that as, you know, like I said, a guy who doesn't have anything, who's young and is is having problems, you know, in living conditions and shit like that. Mm-hmm. He's in another country, but he's on the internet. He loves his craft, graffiti stuff, and he gets onto this little hustle. And he's trying to. To, to hustle this, like I said, stickers or whatever. Yeah. For me, that $20, $30 is nothing. But for him, mm. that was more than his dad made that month. Ooh. Right? Good. He like, yo, you understand? It's a game changer for me. For sure. That little bit. So the, just that introduction to get you hooked, right? Mm. And he's already got a natural progression to it. He's going to keep working at it so he's like i got my own place got your own place Mm. yeah man proud of you bro confidence boosting money in the bank proof that the professionalism and you can do this it's beautiful he did it he did it off of his mind he didn't do it he didn't have to build a box he did he did it off of his mind he did it out of his brain yeah found a way out you know what i mean and and out of a a place that most people would not expect graffiti (laughs) does that does that um is that reciproc is that is that sentiment reciprocated in your career path? Do you feel moments like that with you? Because I mean, we, we're talking to the, the man uh, and M here, and there must have been moments where you were most certainly on the ground. It's seasonal, isn't oh, it? You listen, know? man. I mean, it, I, it's no secret. I mean, everybody. I think everybody goes through up and down. Some people never do. Right. Some people feel more privileged, and they they'll chalk it to like you're just a, a loser or a winner in life, mm. right? But I kind of look at life like an ebb and flow. You know what I mean? There are times mm-hmm. in my life where I've had so much money that I didn't know what to do with the money. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, I got a lot of cash, right? Mm-hmm. And then there were times, and I mean, really, I hand a guy. Like, I was like, I have too much money. Look, mm-hmm. and then there were times where I was like, damn, I got to go brew some food or something. Yeah. yeah. I got to go, I got to go, ride, I got to go do something here. This is yeah. crazy. I can't, I can't do this. Right. Yeah. So I, I realized that, like, yo, my, my life is, 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 is 
ebb and flow. And there are going to be times when I'm going to be right there in the middle. And that's what I'm aiming for, to, to, to not have to go so low. But I'm not really trying to shoot that high. I don't need to. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm, I'm, it's weird, but I'm comfortable like that. I'm, I'm the kind of person that I just want to be comfortable in life. Yeah. I don't need like the, the, the fanciest of anything. Mm-hmm. I just want to be comfortable. Um, and, and my kids be comfortable. You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. just how I am. So, you know, with the kids, I, I have to plan bigger and better, but for myself, I'm happy just chilling, man, yeah. and doing my art when I can and, and, and working for what I need. But when I can do my art, if somebody pays me for my art, not for something they want me to do, mm. then I'm like extremely blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when somebody pays me for a job, it's still it's still a good thing. You know what I mean? When somebody says, "Oh, yo, I want you to do this," okay, bang, I could do that, bang. That's still good. I don't I don't turn my nose up to it. But if I'm able to do my own thing, it's like whenever the first time I seen and I, and I don't want to harp on it, but uh, seen mm-hmm. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. seen getting paid to do his own name. Not to do your name, not to do a hardware store, not yeah, to yeah, do yeah, sponsored yeah. by Coca Cola, not to do this. Yeah. Sing. That Game changer. To me, Game that changer. To me, yeah. That to me is it. That's it. That's that's how I feel comfortable as a graph writer. That's why I'm. That's why I would want to be at. Yo, bro, I just want to do me. You know what I mean? This is what I've been doing my whole life. I live this when I do it. I don't. I'm not emulating. You know what a graph writer would do. I am what a graph writer it does. That's I am. Right. That's what I am. God, I love you said that. Sustainability. Sustainability is like you're gonna start whispering to me. That's the second time you whispered <laughs> to me. You know I do that because I never know whether the the cam this thing this cable just fucks with me. I I had this podcast with Ovi. Uh, you know, original KD Ovi from uh, from the Bronx, and like, you know, I, had to, I was like, "Dude, can you hear me?" And he's like, "Yeah," because because the other day I was having some trouble, and he kind of said the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, the 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 lifespan and career balance of of a of a creative artist is, you do get to this rhythm, this point in that you, where you, it, everything balances out, and sustainability is all that matters. You just find this thing, don't you? Wisdom. Only way you're gonna get wisdom is through experience. So. I understand now what age really means. You know what I'm saying? Get about to be 50 years old this year. I'm saying to myself, damn, you know, could have been a rougher ride for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I have a lot of friends that didn't make it, a lot of friends that are in bad situations to this day. And I'm like, you know, I'm still in a joyous state. <laughs> yeah. I still smile. I don't got the best smile, but I still smile. I, 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 I still happy. I don't always have a reason to be, but I try to be. You know what I mean? Like mm. life is still joyous for me, man. It's not a, it's not a negative. It's a, and and like I said, if 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 I stop believing in tomorrow, I'd have to just give up hope, right? Mm, that's right. Ain't nobody doing that. Nah. Tomorrow's coming. It's always coming. Tomorrow will be banging. I hope it don't rain tomorrow. It's supposed to rain today. I want to paint. Oh, dude, that, that's and being the East Coast, they, these these are trials and tribulations that the West Coast just would never have too much understanding. Oh, maybe Seattle, and we'll go with Seattle and Portland. They 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 suffer a, a hella, but but you know with the rain. But um, yeah, I've been to Seattle. That's kind of a beautiful place, man. I wasn't there in the summer. It was fucking beautiful. I went there once, and yeah, I fuck with it hard because it, it's just it kind of mirrors that. Uh, it's got it, it's so close to Canada, isn't it? Everyone's just so nice and everything's so nice. Boy, you gotta love them, man. You yeah. gotta love them. <laughs> but I've they been to Philly as well. feel like it's okay to do wrong, huh? I've been to Philly as well, though. I have been to Philly have too. You? Yeah, I played there, performed when? there. Oh, man, we're talking nice. like, yeah, noughties, like early noughties, man. And I remember because Scratch from The Roots came around, you know, because I beatbox, hey. right? And he... Yeah, he came up to me. He's like, "Yo, money!" And then we ended up talking the whole night in this club. I didn't even know he was watching. I was boosted. <laughs> Scratch is the man, man. All of them, you know, the roots. All of those cats. All the Philly legends. Yeah, proper legends. OG proper. legends. Yeah, true, true musical legends, man. Just dope, dope artists, man. We, that I think that's that's the one thing that that in Philadelphia you, you'll see in any Philadelphia that that's been here, you know, lived his life. It's a lot of pride, man. We got a lot of good reasons to be proud. You know what I mean? So I yeah. enjoy that. I enjoy it. 
Well, let's get in. Let's get into this real quick because I I really need to give people the, the the kind of geographic breakdown and the and, and perhaps the um the technical uh sources that that lie within Philadelphia, right? So you've got North Philadelphia, yeah. and then you've got South. You've got Kensington area. That's that correct? Mm-hmm. Now Kensington kind of runs uh, uh kind of right behind North Philly. Like North Philly comes in and Kensington's over. If I was on Broad Street, it would be back towards the left. Okay. You know what I mean? It branches out. Kensington, man, why do you say Kensington Beach is such a terrible area, man? Oh my God. That's <laughs> fucking so with you. fucked up down man. It's Yo. traumatized you to think about it, man. North Philadelphia is bad, but Kensington, that area, I guess it's kind of some people kind of consider it North Philadelphia, but it's on the backside of it. Oh Lord, man. Yeah. It's a horrifying thing to see what's going down there with the heroin, man. Well, and, this, is, um, this is kind of why, because from a, from a UK point of view and your European point of view, it's good to get a di- you know, get the dynamics of the city. Northeast is where this, the airport is, and that's an incredible drive from what I remember when you come in. Yeah, it's more of a suburban area when you get to the Northeast, but, you know, now it's, it's, more, uh, it's more diverse now. But it's, it's not really like uh, the city. It's not more like, like Philadelphia, the city. Like, they got row homes. They're just different row homes. You know what I mean? Like Hamptons kind of kind of uh, I don't know about the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it just shit. it's like this giant middle class experiment. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's not like separate houses. It's like a whole block, right? And and they're not apartments. They just split like cake slices, one after another, straight huh. down. Each one is a house. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Okay. So but in North Philadelphia, they got the same thing. It's just that they got old row homes you know what i mean they they allow older so they're more dilapidated you know is that is that is that um is that kind of is that appropriatized in a way that you know the hipsters kind of dig it or is that is that more kind of of a poverty level like there's harder hipsters. working class I don't people know. hipsters listen i don't really know it takes it takes a minute for the hipsters. I don't even know if they're really running out of here like that no more. I know a couple of years ago we used to call them hipsters, but I don't know if we even call them that anymore. Oh, they're um, everywhere. They've all come out over here, here man. <laughs> they're all here. <laughs> out here, hipsters usually don't come in until like all the hard work's done. Like there's a few of them on the gentrification tip. Like let me buy this building for like seventeen thousand dollars, mm-hmm. renovate it, turn it into this, that, and the other in a bar, and sell it for like two hundred fifty thousand. You know, some shit like that. But it's not like it's not like they're coming in until that bar is totally up and all the houses are changed. That's when all the hipsters start coming down. You know, they oh, rent yeah. that shit, lease that shit. They, then they come in and they want to create a dog park and all this other shit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard to say it's bad though because yeah, nah. you know you look at some of the neighborhoods and you're like, damn man, they're never gonna appropriate no money to help y'all. Yeah, that's right. It becomes... They're never going to give you enough. And the best you can do is take the little bit they're going to give you, right? That's sad. Yeah. That's sad. But there's just no organization to protect anybody in these dilapidated areas. Most of the homeowners don't live in the city. They're renting that shit out to somebody. Yeah. They've been renting. So it's all slumlord activity. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, And, you know, over here, I wouldn't completely, I, w- I wouldn't associate hipster with street art. um, But with, with gentrification and shit like you know actually i might add at this point i'm really sorry uh i i heard and i heard through the grapevine of friends from philly that you know a london-based oatmeal brand just went over a whole heap of graph uh, in you know with their advertisements in a real kind of gentrified kind of i don't even know what this oatmeal like <laughs> milk is but some shit that really ruffled some street artist feathers or some shit uh they they i mean this is Philly. They, it depends on where it's, if they're actually targeting. Yeah. When they bring the street art in, I know of a, a spot in Germantown where it's it's basically it's, it's not even street art. It's basically a rolling advertisement for a company that comes down and they paint, you know, various signs for for right. you know promos for television shows to to new movies and products coming out. But they always hand paint it, so it's it's this guy's company, this mural company. Ah. And uh, people thought it was street art at first because the first one was a little bit more extravagant. Yeah. And uh, somebody came and wrote on it that night. You know, really? 
And they came back and they went and did another advertising, whatever. Oh, like the next day. After a while, they just left it alone. But if it's like, if it's a situation, listen, in Philadelphia, they will tag your pieces, right? They don't care if you're doing a wild style or dope production. They don't care who you are. Mm. If you leave any extra space on that wall, they'll tag on that. Because tagging reigns supreme here. Yeah. Just how it is. So you have to like you have to cover everything mm. when you when you do a mural. That that really pretty much goes for muralists too. Mm. For guys that come out and do these giant murals, if you're leaving these big negative spaces on the wall, beware in Philadelphia. They will write on your shit. They're they're not scared to write on somebody's mural. That's so cold. <laughs> you know, and sometimes they go to war with them. If, really. If, uh, if, yeah, if you take a wall or a spot that they have, if the mural arts company comes and does it, annexes it off, and their throw ups or their pieces have been running there for years, they get mad yeah, and they want to take it back. It's their nature to yeah. regulate their names. So, they, yeah, they might come back smacking mural couples. Wow. But it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, it, it just can't. I'm just saying it can. I wouldn't be. I'm not shocked when it does. Nothing surprising. I mean, you've been in the game for so long. Um, and yeah, they, they do it in New York all the time. Yeah, though. yeah, exactly. I know. It's just yeah. <laughs> this is part of the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking them shorts up. <laughs> it's terrible, man. It they don't give a fuck. You. They be like, "Fuck this dude." It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. The other thing as well about Phil, again, while I'm on the subject of the geographical thing and the this this transient of um of street art and the that that kind of back and forth right there, um, you guys, uh, you know, rooftops, and and again going back to the tagging as well. I mean, you guys go the distance; it doesn't matter the, the further away that the buff can get it, you guys are on it, and it just oh yeah yeah no they they play beat the buff all the time. It sounds like great fun. <laughs> It's like, like how far I'm telling you, you listen, if you, for Philly writers that are Philly writers, there's nothing like what they, when they out together, they are having the time of their fucking lives. They are, they are flexing different skills. They talking about hand styles. They creeping spots together. They probably boosting paint together. Like they're, we used to call them combos. That person you wrote with, that's your combo. The Ooh, person okay. that, that, that you always saw my name with, like, I've had a few combos in my career in Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? And when usually when I was doing something big, that other person was doing it with, or if he was doing something, I was there, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But um, yeah, man, that, 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 that camaraderie makes it so much fun because y'all start discovering all the stuff about tagging is dope. Like, you know, you start recognizing what a buff spot is and what a, a Everlast is. Right. right. Wait, hold on. Breaks one second. Breaks one second. Right. Because these are new slangs, right? Combo. Um, combo Everlast. Combo, yeah. It's just you and your partner. New so, York, so what is, what's a liner? Codes. What, Bro, what's a liner? What are stamps? You know, wickets. In, so, oh, like, a stamp. You know what so I'm saying? A one-liner, a one-liner is when, when it's a non-stop tag from beginning to end. There's no breaks in the paint or in the right. tag when you're doing it. Right. Gotcha. It just constantly goes with your finger. All right. A stamp is like, the, that tag that you're known to do, that that it's it's your hardest tag. So it's it's usually something that you can precisely duplicate every time, mm-hmm. right? So when you do it, bang, you know, yeah, and you do it again, bang, you know, stamp, stamp, Everybody's stamp, like, stamp. That's stamp. the same fucking tag he always does. That's his tag. Um, so we call that the stamp. Wow. You see what I mean? Or a print. Some people call it the print. Now, Listen. don't get the print confused with the tall print because the tall print is your name elongated, right? So tall from that from the floor mean, upwards? Tall print, huh? From the floor upwards, that elongated, like... See, that's, that's, the, that's the analogy we, we, we give so that everybody can just understand it. But it doesn't have to be from the, t- the, the ceiling to the, to the floor. Mm. I've seen tall prints that weren't that bit, but it was the style of the tag. Mm. So, in other words, instead of, if I'm doing an NM, right, like that, yeah. I'm doing an NM longer now, all the way up and down. Yeah. I don't got to yeah. go to the whole wall, 
but I got to go long enough to show you the elongation of the tag of the, of the letters up and down. Then you're going to do that with any letters. My E's would do the same thing, right? But yeah. my regular E would be like that or yeah. like that, you know, or like that. Like, I wouldn't do it so straight. Mm. I always imagine the tall print is to be formed in a rectangle, standing up. Mm. Portrait. Right? That's yeah. how I see it no matter what. Now, why does it always seem like we're taking the whole spot? Because sometimes if you look in between windows, it's the perfect rectangle. Oh, my God. Like, yo, look at that shit. I got to yeah. take that shit from top to bottom. That's the perfect rectangle, right? Or if it's in a window frame and the window got wood on the front of it, you're like, damn, that wood on the window is the perfect window, the uh, perfect tall print on. Tall prints are simplified basis of the wicked. Let me just say that, all right? So the tall print, the elongated ideology of taking your letter and making it longer, right? Yeah. Now, now that you know what you're saying, and we take the letter, we stretch it out. Mm. Now, the wicked is the execution of control over that. So now you're doing whip marks, right? To show yeah. those whip marks, those, they say those scribbles. No, you don't understand. For us, that's a whip mark. That's somebody being able to show that they can whip it down and blow it out a little bit, pull it right back up, whip it up and flare it. Pull it right back down, tighten it up, flare it out, pull it right back down, you know, and whip it all the way around in one continuous motion. So for us, it's a totally different game. It's a different it's, language. It's a whole different stylistic. Um, and we learned this shit since we like, I learned at 13. So niggas is learning since they kids. What? Come on, man. We're not asking everybody to accept it for theirs. <laughs> It's we just in- telling you that's what's ours. You dig what I mean? Like, this is what we do in Philadelphia. We write graffiti our way. And I, I respect everybody who does that as well. I look at the dudes in in in, in, in uh, South America. Oh, they be yeah. climbing the buildings doing the big, like, diamond tags. and Crazy. And letters they be doing. I don't understand it, but I'm like, yo, they getting the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this thing is a bullshit. That nigga got 45 <laughs> floors, bro. Count him. <laughs> this guy's bugging. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing his thing. He's expressing that's their style. That's how they're doing it. I respect that. I'm not going to say that's whack. I don't even understand it. I- well, listen, and I have to I have to, to tell you at this point, as being from an outsider looking in, knowing, you know, I, when you look at a wicket, you look at the the, the 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 wrist action. You look at the but the reasons why I never really specified because it's such an inf- and and speaking in real basic terminology, you have just actually broken the ice for for me to be able to even ask you a question. Right. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people a have the definitive answer which you've just blatantly given, but also it's not readily available on the internet. And hey, well, you know what? It shouldn't be. I I, I said it, but. It, it, it's it's like I don't want to sell it for gumbo. I'm not trying to market that out. That's my tradition in my city. I got to be proud of it. I got to say it in a way that makes sense. Because if not, you know, they're quick to to call us, you know, nonsensical, and it's just about this, and it's just about listen. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's bad. You know what I mean? And by the way, when I'm not hurting nobody. You know, <laughs> by you know, uh, bastardizing you know the English language. Let me do what I want to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if Look, it, if with, I want to flex like this, my flex. This my flex. And and critically, critically, uh, again, if people, you know, for people to understand the the culture of Philadelphia. Like it starts on the ground. It starts by walking the streets, meeting people, and the first thing I do whenever. I get to, yeah, you look at the graph. That's the first thing you do. So curiosity will always be there. And every time it goes out into a commercial place, people are going to see it. And curiosity. And, and that's our contribution to the game. For sure. Uh, 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 another avenue to create. There's a lot of people that come to Philadelphia that, that, that aren't from Philadelphia. They want to learn Philly graph styles. And some live here and they get it. And yeah. and, and I definitely love a, a lot of the artists that have come here. There's some in New York and and other places that are dope. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I really love their stuff and they understand what we're doing. Like, like um, you know, Curve is a really dope artist from New mm. York City and he knows and understands Philadelphia graph. He respects it and he and he and he apparently likes it as, as much as we do. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't expect that he now has to forfeit who, who he is or where he's from just because he likes and has experienced and lived in Philadelphia. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a healthy way he goes about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He still rocks out with his former art. He doesn't split that hair. He's not trying to be something he's not. Mm. But he loves hand styles, and he definitely gives us a nod. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's just about who you are and what you're doing with the graph. You know what I mean? I, mm. What you care about. I care about the contribution that Philadelphia is given to the graph world. We, we're lucky because we we always have, have the icon cornbread. Right. To, yeah. to 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 break the international ice anywhere and everywhere. For like sure. if you know about graffiti and, and any other sense besides New York, then you you probably know something about cornbread. Thousand percent. And so that percent. that that puts us on the map. Mm -hmm. That puts us on the map. And that's a dope thing. And I think all the writers since then that have really given us those kind of big shouts, Espo and Karma. And yeah. All right. I'm not going to make a list. It's yeah. too many You'll get yourself There's in trouble. Of, There'll be loads I of people. I don't even said all that. I don't even say <laughs> A lot of people have made a good contribution from Philadelphia. And I, I, I'm proud of that. And I, I like to hope that at the end of the day, when I'm finally, you know, done, can't write on nothing no more, that, you know, I have you. added something. Exactly. Category. I mean, even now, bro. I mean, it's... This is what I got most excited about and the idea of having a conversation with you because, you know, your style and, you know, over the years, man, like, jeez, like, it transcends. <laughs> Again, the... the, the I, I appreciate that, man. Mm. And sharing sharing my, my artistic life with everybody who's just a part of what graffiti is, a uh, gift that graffiti has given me. Since we always put it out in the street, ever since we was kids, we put it out in the street. It, it, it wouldn't make sense to me to try to hide that from the world. I was always trying to give it to the world, right? We always were trying to freely give what was so freely given to us. So why not put it out there? Yeah. Right? That's 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 the game of this. That's the game of this, man. Share it all. Share it all. They share it with you, share it back. <laughs> For sure, bro. And it's been a real pleasure, Chanchi. Where can people find more of your awesomeness, man? Where can they where can they tap in and get indulge in this landscape of yo, you probably NM. won't hear me talking a lot on it, but you can always check out my art at NM the Great Dash TDK. It's probably gonna be a lot of clips and, and loud music that I've been listening to to that day, but <laughs> it, it'll be graph, it'll be my art and you know. Like I said, man, I hope you enjoy it, brother. And I appreciate you. Killer, killer. <laughs> my guy, my guy. Hey, listen, man, when you're next in the UK, you know what to do. Tea in the pot, drinks in the fridge, ashtray on the table. Come on, man. Yo, that's love. <laughs> oh, that's love. But y'all not going to let me in there, man. They're not letting me. <laughs> not going to do it. That's right. But I would. When I would, I could, and I will, brother. Be safe. Love you. Yeah. Love my brother. Listen, Killer Killer Podcast, that love isn't out of fashion. Big shout out to NM Inside the Place, TDK. Oh, God, what a podcast, eh? Hey? Listen, you don't tell, I ain't give nothing for, for nothing, man. That was some education beyond. Thank you so much, NM. Superstar. Peace, guys. Peace.